All right, we are going to go over good trigger squeeze and forgetting about recoil um, when it comes to shooting a handgun. Now, a lot of you see my handgun shooting videos, and a lot of you ask, how in the world are you shooting a handgun so well? Especially when I throw up a video like uh, me shooting this handgun right here at a measured, confirmed 123 yards and putting three rounds out of six rounds on target on a 12 by 18 inch piece of uh, steel. And a lot of people go, well, how are you doing that? You've got insane pistol control. Well, first off, I am I consider myself an average shooter when it comes to a handgun. There's a lot of people out there that can seriously kick my rear end as far as long range handgun, handgun shooting is concerned. And uh, usually those guys, you know, you've got the IPSC, the IDPA, the guys that compete for a living, they could kick the pants off of me. But uh, I don't consider myself new on the block. I consider myself pretty average and I can hold my own. The biggest thing when it comes to shooting a handgun is the trigger manipulation, the trigger squeeze. That's the most important thing when it comes to a handgun. Um, some people will say, well, hey, your sight picture is the most important. Well, it is very important, obviously. Uh, if you want to hit the bullseye, you've got to align those sights. But the easiest thing to do to knock those sights off target is have an improper trigger squeeze. Um, what I'm going to do is show you what a good trigger squeeze looks like, and I'm going to explain to you the process of telling yourself that there is no recoil. And I'll explain that here in a minute. Here's my P64, neat little surplus gun, 9x18 Makarov, fun little gun to shoot, and I've been carrying it around a little bit to see how it carries. It carries extremely well, I mean it's a smaller handgun, 6 plus 1 rounds of Makarov, so you know, if somebody's looking for a decent, well-built little carry conceal gun, uh, check these out, they're decent little guns. But in any case, this thing isn't really known for being accurate. I mean, sure, it's an accurate gun, but people don't think of a Polish P64 when you're talking about accurate handguns. There's a lot of other handguns out there. They think 1911s, uh, higher-end handguns, and uh, stuff like that. They don't think of these old surplus guns. But I've already proved that they're accurate. The reason they're accurate is because I'm shooting them right. It's just like any other gun. If you shoot it right, it's going to be accurate. It doesn't matter if it's a $100 handgun or a... $1,200, $1,500, $2,000 handgun. But the trigger is where it's at. Once you get your sights aligned, um, you have to have a good trigger squeeze to put your rounds on target and in a tight group. If you don't have that good trigger squeeze, you are going to be off target and your groups are going to be bigger than they should be. And the application this comes in is uh, some people might say, well, why are we worried about such tight groups in self-defense? Uh, aren't we worried more about combat shooting, getting around center of mass? You don't want rounds to be falling on top of each other anyway because you want that nice effect over an area of center of mass. You want to create as much damage as possible to stop the threat. That's true. But worrying about good trigger manipulation in slow aimed fire is going to translate over into fast shooting. When you get good at manipulating that trigger slow, it becomes muscle memory and you're able to manipulate that trigger faster and faster and faster. And your shots are going to stay more on target the faster you shoot. So that's kind of where that translates, uh, translates over. But all right, you have your handgun, your sights are on target. The number one thing to remember is as soon as your sights are on target, you begin your trigger squeeze is just gently place the middle of your first pad on the finger on the trigger. Don't do too much like that, don't do too little. Right in the middle. Gently exert pressure until you get up against the sear. Every handgun's different, some of them really don't have a lot of free play like this. I tend to prefer handguns that have a little bit of free play. I kind of like that two stage effect because it gets me more mentally prepared. I can get on target and go, okay, now I'm up against the sear. I get more mentally prepared for the shot. Now you're up against the sear. All you're doing when your shot, when your uh, sights are on target and you're ready for the shot, increasing pressure straight to the rear, bang, the shot goes off. 
the gun's going to recoil. Keep your trigger finger to the rear like so. When your gun gets back on target, release the trigger. Release it. Hear that click? That's the sear re-engaging. Start to put pressure on it again. Now you're back up against the sear. Go ahead and squeeze, 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 bang. Just like so. That's what you should be doing for every shot. Now, along with that, the most common mistake I see people do is when they get ready for the shot, they sit there and they go, okay, here comes the shot, here comes the recoil, and they tense up. That causes the gun to either go left, right, or more commonly, down. That's going to throw your shot groups off. Most defensive handguns, with the exception of the real heavy caliber handguns or the real hot loadings, they are very easy to control and recoil. It doesn't matter if you're a child. It doesn't matter if you're a female, a male, large hands, small hands. Um, of course, there are some considerations to be made if you have disabilities or you just for some reason don't have a lot of muscle tissue in your wrist, hand, or forearm. Then you want to pick an appropriate caliber like a 9mm 380 and pick an appropriate platform that has a little bit less recoil. But, for the most part, recoil is not going to hurt you. It's not going to jump the gun out of your hands. You are on the end of the gun that's safe. When you're firing, the only unsafe end of the gun is this end, which is hopefully pointed either at a target or in a dire situation at a threat and nothing else. If you're holding your gun in the proper way, which is a firm handshake grip, and then using your offhand, wrap it around, provide tension like this with your offhand, like so, if you're holding it right, that gun will not recoil out of your hands. So tell yourself there is no recoil. The only thing in the world that you should be reciting in your head when you have your sight picture as you're maintaining your sight pickers, you're the only thing you should re recite in your head, there's only the trigger pull. Trigger, 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 bang, the shot goes off. Then that starts to become muscle memory. This is where dry fire comes into a lot of uh, play here. Now I'm trying not to dry fire this too much, I don't like dry fire. And P64s, you don't want to dry fire them too much just because of the safety drum, you could crack it. If you dry fire it too much. So I try not to do that too much. Some guns you can dry fire no problem. Best thing to do is just go ahead and get a snap cap. It's a fake bullet. You can buy them online. Throw it in the chamber. You can sit there and cock the hammer and dry fire all night long. You ain't gonna hurt it. Uh, this is especially true with rimfire handguns. Make sure that if you got a rimfire you do not want to dry fire a rimfire because you can mess it up. You want to get a snap cap for that. But dry fire conditions you to pull that trigger straight back in a setting where you're not even concerned about recoil because there is none. There's no live rounds. So you're pulling straight to the back, straight to the back, straight to the back. The more you do that in dry fire, when you get out to the range, guess what's going to happen? Muscle memory. If you do the same thing at the range, forget about the recoil, forget about the live ammunition, get on target, pull it straight to the back, squeeze it straight to the back, to the back rather, the shot's going to go off, and guess what? You are going to be on target. And you're going to know what a good shot feels like. Then you do it again. Once you get that first good shot off, you do it again. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. It's like playing golf or going bowling. When you get a strike in bowling, what's the first thing you want to do after you get that strike? You want to repeat everything you did the exact same way so you can get another strike, right? It's the same thing with golf. When you figured out how to get a hole in one, you want to be able to do the same things over again each hole so that way you can get a hole in one. It's the same with shooting a handgun. It's the same with shooting a rifle. You want to repeat that process. Once you get that good first trigger squeeze in and that shot lands bullseye, you want to do that again. And then you want to do it again. And then you want to do it again. And then you'll find that no matter what type of handgun you have, you're going to be shooting a ragged hole at seven yards, or at least damn near a ragged hole, depending on the specific type of handgun you're running. And then you start moving out farther. You start shooting 10 yards, 15 yards, 25 yards, 50 yards, 100 yards. Um, just look at the videos. I have, uh, what is it? I think I have 
three 100 yard handgun videos out now. Two of them are with a Ruger P95, where I got a 50% hit rate on both of them, shooting a Ruger P95 with standard 115 grain full metal jacket ammunition, standing at kind of a rapid rate. This gun right here, I shot at 123 yards just very recently, and I got three out of six on 12 by 18 inch steel. And that was shooting slower, concentrating more, um, taking more of my time. And that was with my first outing on this handgun. Right after I shot, you, you, you'll notice I got another video on this handgun where I was shooting at the pistol range. Those were my first shots out of this handgun at 10 yards. I shot a little bit more, went over to the uh, 600 meter range, and then you saw the videos where I did the rapid fire, I did the magazine change, and then I did the 100 yard, or the 123 yard. So now you see what I did with this handgun the very first outing out. And I'll tell you right now, I am not anything special. I'm not a special shooter. I don't consider myself an uber expert. The only thing I'm doing is paying attention to the basic fundamentals. And that's all you got to do. So just please keep that in mind. Imagine what I can do with this pistol uh, based on what I did on the first outing. Imagine if I go once a week with this gun for a year. Imagine how insanely skilled I would be with this pistol. Just for knowing the pistol, knowing exactly where it shoots, with what type of ammunition, and uh, knowing exactly where my rounds are going to hit at different distances. So please remember, if you take anything out of this video, I'm sorry it's getting a little long-winded. I see that I'm over 10 minutes, so I apologize for being long-winded. Just remember one thing. Trigger squeeze is paramount with a handgun. You get those sights lined up. If you do not squeeze that trigger right, your rounds are going to be off. Guaranteed every time, and your groups are never going to be as tight as they possibly could be. So all right, that's enough of me talking. I don't want to put you guys to sleep. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay safe, stay free, stay armed.